let's have a chat about agriculture. Because whether you realize it or not, our world would not be anything close to what we have now if it wasn't for farmers of all shapes and sizes. Just about every piece of food that you have or make can be tied back to farmers and their fields in some way, shape, or form. But the thing that we should all be grateful for isn't only that we have farmers, but that they have incredible machines that help them process the massive amounts of food that they have to grow in order to keep up with demand. And that also means they have some incredible machines that help ease their burdens. So with that in mind, here now are the 20 modern agriculture machines that are at another level. Number 20. The Thresher Double Master 4 Now, where should we start with all of this agricultural odyssey business? How about with peanuts? After all, peanuts are used for all sorts of products, which includes making one of the best things ever, that being peanut butter. I mean, seriously. We have PB&J like every other day, and I regret nothing. Anyways, none of that would mean anything if the farmers couldn't harvest the peanuts in their fields, which used to be quite the chore to do. But then things like the Thresher Double Master 4 came into play, and it all became something that could easily harvest things like peanuts or dry beans with ease. As you can see in this clip, part of the ease with this machine is that you can simply attach it to your tractor and then drag the thresher behind you so that you can get everything harvested. All you have to do is simply ensure that everything is in a straight line and the machine's going to do the rest. It sounds like a nice and simple way of doing things to me. Then, as everything is brought up into the harvester, it slowly yet efficiently separates everything until there's nothing left but the bean or the peanut, and then it dumps that final product into a container where it builds up so that the farmer only has to remove that part where it comes time to collect their bounty. And that's something that we're going to be pointing out a lot in this list. This isn't only about making things easier, it's about collecting everything so that they can easily be stored and shipped to the next place in the food chain. That's why many of these machines are indeed next level, because they give the farmer a break and lessen what they need to do so that things can get processed. Because the less time they have to spend on some of the more taxing jobs, the more that they can spend on expanding their crop while ensuring it's the highest of quality. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. And now, it's time for the fancy topic. Take a look at this picture and try to keep your eyes inside your head, in case they bulge out a little bit. The farming machine that you see here may appear to be very odd, but it's allegedly something that farmers in Holland have made in order to help with harvesting some of their crops. Aside from the people, because they are distorted in certain ways, it looks like this is a legitimate machine. And according to the story, it's not only a good machine, it's an incredibly efficient one. Now you may think that the spiral design of it would make it just a little bit inefficient, but spirals are used in all sorts of construction machines, which includes the ones that you don't normally think about. For example, drilling machines have the classic spiral drill that goes into the earth, and then there are mining machines like trommels that have a special spiral design to try and separate dirt and rock so that things like gold can go into the correct places. And when you think about it, if you're even trying to harvest something like grain, you're trying to get it off the ground and then separate it into what you need it to be. Based on what we see in the picture, the machine isn't only harvesting the grain, but putting it into smaller bundles, which might make them easier to transport later. Arguably, the biggest problem with this alleged machine is that it's a bit cumbersome in size and might not be the easiest to control. But if it is real, and it works, that's pretty cool in our books. And who are we to judge something based solely on how odd that it looks? As always, you should comment down below using the hashtag FancyTopic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. The Autonomous Tractor 
Now, before you have a panic attack and say something like, this takes us closer to Skynet, I just want to say that, yeah, it probably does take us one step closer to Judgment Day, but Judgment Day is inevitable anyway, so we should all just enjoy the ride before we go up in flames. The idea of the autonomous tractor is that many people have been trying to make this thing happen for many years. They started off slowly and then built it up to the point where there are tractors that are self-driving out in the fields right now. It's a scary thought, but it's also one that's backed up by the technology that works. But how exactly does it work? Autonomous farm tractors are equipped with integrated systems, computers, and processors, and these connections transform electrical impulses into a controller or CPU to enable the tractor to perform. Each tractor is equipped with its own set of interconnected capabilities and fail-safe emergency systems, and every autonomous farm tractor comes with a remote emergency stop feature for everyone's safety. And thank goodness for that. As for how they know where to go and get around, well, that's simple yet effective. It's GPS systems that are backed up by cameras and other devices in the tractor to ensure that it knows where it is at all times. And plus, thanks to these cameras, the farmer can control these tractors from a hub that they use to view where the tractors are at all times. And so, the farmer is still doing the work, but it's more like supervising versus having to try and control everything remotely. The point of the autonomous tractor is to increase productivity and ensure that human error is erased. To that end, it would make a farming expedition much more efficient due to the precise positioning and the computer would be able to calculate and not have to stop and start because they missed something. Now, you're not going to see these on every farm field in the world, but we may end up getting to that point sooner rather than later. And then when they do make that next leap in technology, the Terminators are soon to follow. Hasta la vista, baby. Number 18. Harvesting Robots Well, turns out Judgment Day may actually be here, because we have robots harvesting our fields. We're all absolutely doomed. And while that may or may not be true, the idea of having robots on farms is something that has been building for quite some time now. And for the most basic of reasons, the world is getting ever closer to 8 billion people, and that means that we need more food than ever before. And you might have heard of places with food shortages because of the lack of crops to spread around. The fix is not as simple as saying, hey farmers, we need more crops, go and plant some, as there's only so much that a farmer or even a family of farmers can do. And that's where the robots come into play. Harvesting robots of all shapes and sizes, not unlike the autonomous tractors I talked about before, can help with the efficiency and production of crops, so that more can be made without spending more time trying to get them picked and harvested. As a result, supply can go up and be efficient while doing it. Harvesting robots are designed to harvest crops such as fruits and vegetables, and they use sensors and cameras to detect when the crops are ready to be picked. Then, they use robotic arms or other tools to carefully harvest them without damaging the produce. There are also weeding robots that can go into the fields and pull out weeds before they damage the crops, using special software to ensure that they just pull out the weeds and not the vital crop plants themselves. As if that's not enough, there are special robots that are being used to seed fields and even plant crops. Again, now, we're not going to see fully automated farms in the near future, because many people just won't trust them and believe in using manpower versus robots. However, as the need goes up, they may just see that these next-level items could help the farms to survive, and that's the most important thing. Number 17. Pluck o track Senior the Pluck-O-Track Senior is a versatile harvesting aid that's used to rapidly, efficiently, and economically harvest fruits like apples, pears, citrus fruits, and cherries. The pickers work at ground level, or when standing on the horizontally and vertically mobile harvesting platforms, at more than up to 4 meters of tree height. They place the fruits on narrow, movable conveyors, which feed the fruits to the crates. And believe it or not, this brand of machine has been in use for over 50 years, and the results end up speaking for themselves. 
First and foremost, due to how it harvests the items, the amount of damaged goods through picking is drastically reduced, which means that farmers have more crops to sell. The other thing it does is make harvesting go by faster. According to them, it increases production by 30% and thus saves money on labor costs. With the senior model, they teamed up with another company to help refine the design even further, allowing it to balance itself on trees that are not perfectly straight or to help it on the ground when necessary. When you get good results like this, it is hard to deny that this kind of thing can help farmers of all kinds. Number 16. Hemp Transplanter Now, believe it or not, hemp used to be one of the most popular products in early America during colonial times, and it was popular in other parts of the world as well. Then it kind of died out, but these days, people are realizing that there is value in hemp once again, and that means there's a big market for it. And when there's a big market for a farming product, farmers want nothing more than to get as much produced so that they can end up doing a lot of sales. That's where this transplanter comes in. It was originally designed to help with tobacco production, which is something that we shouldn't promote in the slightest, and yet it was converted to now putting hemp seeds down in the fields. It's the classic human tradition of use what you have to make something else work, and work it actually does. Chechi and Magli help make this transplanter, and you can get one now if you feel the urge to let loose on your hemp growing desires. And if you don't know, hemp can be used to make all kinds of things, from paper to textiles to clothing to biodegradable plastics, paint, insulation, and biofuel. And plus it also has medicinal purposes as well. You may be using hemp right now in your daily lives and not even know it. Number 15. Chuamone. Now, would you like to know what Shuamone translates to? It means big foam, and that's an incredibly accurate way of describing what this next level machine is that I probably mispronounced. Because if you were to ask farmers what the biggest problems that they face were, then making their crops, one of the things that they would quickly come to say is weeds. Fields have weeds, and if you're not careful, they will end up destroying your crops. The easy way to deal with this is through multiple weed killers. But as you might know, those are not always the best for multiple reasons. First, if you're not careful, you can end up killing your crops alongside the weeds, which is a lose-lose situation. Secondly, if you use the wrong kind of weed killer, you're going to end up damaging the environment. And third, they can be incredibly taxing and expensive to put down all over your field. That's where this big foam machine comes into play. The foam itself is derived from plants, so it's not going to hurt the environment in the slightest. The trick with it is, though, that they use special thermal heat that the foam puts out to kill the weeds so that they can't grow, and all the while not hurting the main plants or trees. It may hurt the nearby grass, but, you know, that can grow back. Number 14. The Dry Bean Digger there are many things that farmers don't want to deal with when they're harvesting their crops, and one of them is dead loss, or any loss in general for that matter. They want machines that will help them to not only get the crops out of the ground, but ones that will honestly help them to keep the plants and crops from getting ripped up improperly, resulting in them having fewer products to give out. That's where this dry bean digger comes into play. It is the perfect machine for those with dry bean fields that need a quick and efficient way to get things done. The parallel lift front divider system gives dispensable smooth vine separation in even the toughest of conditions, and the picking fingers provide a smooth and gentle flow of material. So all you really need is one machine and you'll be getting the best out of your beans with virtually no loss to speak of. I mean, what more could a farmer even ask for? I'm sure he could ask for more things, but Really, couldn't we all? We all are human after all. Number 13. Fruit Picking Machines Now, did you know that there's actually a grading system when it comes to farming things like fruit? The ones that you see in the stores and markets, they tend to be of the highest grade, which you would think is okay because it's the best fruit possible, right? But in truth, it's a standard that leaves plenty of other serviceable fruits on the ground and not being used in any way. 
and that's really a waste, which is bad. That's where these fruit picking machines come into play. They are self-driving vehicles that will go into an area where fruit has fallen from trees and then slowly pick it up and process it so that it can be clean and then used. It makes sense when you think about it. If all of the grading systems deal with aesthetics, then why not have something that makes every piece of fruit seem like the shiniest and best one possible? Farmers absolutely hate having to deal with waste, and they lose products every year, not only because of damage, but because it doesn't look good enough. And so if machines like this can help out with that, we should all be giving it to these farmers all over the place. Number 12. The Bale Boss 4 Well, that's not tooting its own horn at all. When you call yourself a boss at something, you better know what you're doing or be able to get the job done in the best way possible, or else you're just lying to yourself and everyone else. So what does the Bale Boss 4 do? Well, despite what you may be thinking, this isn't the kind of machine to make hay bales, but there are plenty out there that can do them efficiently. What this machine does is help to stack them and organize them. It's important to note that there are multiple farms that deal with hay bales 24-7, and that also means that there are plenty to organize and stack. With this machine, you can put four big hay bales in the back and then easily stack them upright with no fuss or muss. Eventually, you'll end up having a massive hay bale that was super easy to set up in the end. Number 11. BF8000SL this is the BF8000SL from TubeLine, and unlike the hay bales that I just talked about with the stacker, this machine produces cylindrical hay bales via its process, but they are truly large. I'm talking ones that could be almost 2 meters in diameter and weigh thousands of kilograms. Once the bale is made, a special arm can then be used to transport it to wherever the farmer needs it to be. So you can make them and then store them with one machine. That's pretty cool in my book. And plus, since it does all the work itself, the farmer never has to fear bailing out. Number 10. High Speed Disc Showcase Now I've talked plenty about machines that help to get crops out of the ground or off the ground, but what about getting the fields ready to actually plant them? I mean, after all, it does take a ton of work to ensure the field is ready to grow anything. You sometimes need to cut the ground up or Remove certain things to ensure the seeds don't get overtaken, and it can be a whole lot of effort. That's where things like this high-speed disc showcase machine comes into play. It's designed with a long working arm to remove harmful residues from the ground, while also digging into the earth to ensure that the seeds you're about to plant have plenty of room to grow. Plus, it goes at a fast speed, so you'll be tearing things up at a good pace and be done with your preparatory work before you even know it. Number 9. The Browed Grape Harvester As I've talked about plenty, there are numerous kind of crops that need to be harvested, but I'm going to focus on one of my favorites right now, and that would be grapes. I do love grapes. They're delicious, they're sweet, they're juicy, and for some of you, you like grapes because they help to make wine. But grapes can also be quite delicate due to their soft nature and small size, and that's why many people have been using broad grape harvesters for decades to help harvest their grape fields. Now, over the years, this line of harvesters have been growing in both efficiency, fuel economy, and ensuring that the grapes are in the best condition. Once they're done harvesting, they want to be the best machines possible for the farmers, and they seem to be doing a good job. Or perhaps they're doing a grape job. Number 8. DeWolf Carrot Harvester Now we're going from grapes to carrots, and though there are two different kind of crop, they do have some similar issues when it comes to harvesting. After all, while carrots are tougher than grapes, that doesn't mean that you can just rip them out of the ground. You could potentially snap them, making them less valuable, or you could rip out their leafy heads, which means that you'll need to work harder to get the carrots out of the dirt. As such, the DeWolf Carrot Harvester is a perfect item to help you with your carrot needs, as it has a delicate yet refined system that is meant to help get the carrots out of the ground 
in the best possible way and not cause any kind of damage. If a certain rabbit were to show up during that process, well, I couldn't guarantee the carrot's safety, now could I? Number 7. Sugar Beet Harvesters Isn't it nice when the machines very clearly tell you what they're harvesting, so you don't have to explain what it is that they do? If only everything were as simple as that. Anyways, sugar beets are a popular crop, and many of you likely eat them. The sugar beet harvester I'm talking about right now has another refined process not only to harvest the sugar beets, but to ensure that they'll grow back in the field for the next batch. The beets are lifted from the ground through lifting shares and through cleaning rollers, the transfer web and the discharge elevator, the beets are separated from the adhering soil and transported into the holding tank of the machine. I really don't understand anything I just said. Interestingly, they also remove the leaves of the beets and keep them on the field because they act as a fertilizer so that the next batch can grow. It is the circle of life, everybody. Number 6. The Sugar Cane Harvester Names do help a lot. It's easy to explain stuff when you know what the harvesters are working towards, and it's a beautiful kind of synergy. Ones like the John Deere CH9 series are a special kind of sugar cane harvester because they promise to double your production of sugar cane without rushing through the fields. They have a two-pronged attack within the machine so that it can go through twice the product while also maintaining the speed to harvest it properly. Sometimes speed is just much more important, but speed can also kill when it comes to plants. And it makes up in time in other ways, like with loading and cutting down your fuel costs while you're harvesting. Number 5. Wheeled Harvester This particular wheeled harvester from John Deere is what many people use to harvest trees. While you might think of lumberjacks as the main source of tree chopping, that can be incredibly dangerous, time-consuming, and otherwise just a thing of the past. And that's why this special harvester was created, because it can have the driver in the cabin and thus be safe from the falling trees, while the machine itself is perfectly capable of cutting down trees and even grabbing onto them for transport. And with its robust construction and advanced technology, this harvester offers exceptional performance in challenging terrain and forest conditions. It quickly and accurately fells the limbs and cuts trees of various sizes, and the precise control system allows its operator to optimize the productivity while also minimizing damage to the surrounding area. It can be equipped with all kinds of optional attachments for forwarding, loading, and processing timber, and this allows the operator to do a wide range of forestry tasks within a single machine, which maximizes efficiency while reducing the operating costs. It's simple, it's safe, and it's efficient. And really, what more could you ask for? Number 4. The SW4014 Wrapper Now I'm going to talk about quite an exceptional hay baling machine. You may be curious about what part of the process I'm talking about with this one, because I've already shown you how hay bales are made and stacked, so what could possibly be left? Well, traditionally, Hay bales are shipped out to wherever they're needed to be, but that can also be problematic if weather conditions aren't the best or there are road conditions that could contaminate the hay bales. And that's where the SW4014 wrapper comes in. It's a special machine that will wrap up the hay bales in a special material so that they can stay pristine no matter what happens to them during transport. The machine can wrap rather large bales and do it in quick time, and that also means that you'll have an army of protected hay bales ready at the go before you even know it. Number 3. The Opitz Optimal 3000 Here's a hint on what this one does. It has something to do with trees. It doesn't cut them down. Oh no. It doesn't harvest fruit from them like the others I've shown you. Instead, the Opitz Optimal 3000 is a machine that's used to transplant the trees, and not just any old trees, but some pretty decently sized mature ones. The question you may have now is, why would anyone want to do that? Well, first off, we need to protect all the trees that we can, because they're kind of vital to the world. Secondly, the cutting of trees for development purposes is hurting all sorts of things, 
So just imagine instead of only chopping them down, that we get to move them to another area. That's what this machine does. It can completely and safely uproot a tree and then carry it a long distance until it's placed in its new home. Number 2. Agricultural Drones Drones are something that are slowly being integrated into just about every single facet and part of our world, and it's no surprise that that also includes farming. In India, for example, they're being incredibly progressive with how they're using drones in farming, encouraging farmers to take up the controls so that they can be more efficient with how they handle things. For example, via drone cameras, they can take a much quicker survey of their fields so that they can assess what they need to do in order to help their crops grow better or which parts of their fields need to be tended to much more. There are also some drones that can be used to disperse certain chemicals more quickly than they would be by traditional farming machines and methods, and the overall goal of using these drones is simple to use modern technology to help the farmers get the job done better, quicker, and help them understand the potential issues that may be hindering them. Considering all the industries that use drones right now for things like surveying and even filming TV shows and movies, it's not really that far of a stretch to see farmers across the world using drones for similar purposes. After all, getting a bird's eye view of things is so much easier than having to see everything from the ground and then trying to gauge what all of it means. And if they can save money while boosting their crop yield by using the drones, well, why shouldn't they be put into use? Number 1. The Robotic Tea Harvester When we think about tea, we often think about British people enjoying it with some biscuits, you know, at a cafe somewhere, maybe with a large teapot. And it's kind of an unfair stereotype, really. But what may surprise you is that they only have one plantation in England that's actually dedicated to tea. What's even more weird is that the place has an on-site robot harvester that is autonomous and harvests the tea with ease. Just as cool is that this is an entirely electric vehicle and it's powered by the sun. You can see the solar panels that it uses to power itself. And while the engineer who made it can be seen in the video, he's actually not piloting it. He's just there to ensure that nothing goes wrong. This is yet another example of people having a need and then coming up with an interesting robotic solution in order to help them out. The tea plantation seems to like their harvester, and perhaps others in the UK and beyond will begin using such a craft in the future. Well, that's all from the realm of agriculture and the machines that help to make it a much smoother entity and get things done in record time. Were you amazed by some of the machines that have been created and the things that they can do? And which ones did you feel were the most impressive? Perhaps there's another machine that could have easily been added to this list. Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. You should also check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.